You mentioned also about NeoVim's popularity. I got to know NeoVim because of Prime, because I watch a lot of YouTube and I saw this guy, you know, I used Vim in the past in servers and uh, I hated it. You know, the first few times I used Vim, I was like, why do people use this? It's awful, you know, HJKL, you know, insert normal mode. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, this is not for me. But I searched on YouTube and I found Prime. And I found specifically when he moved from Vim to NeoVim. And I was like, okay, so should I go from to Vim or should I go to NeoVim? Prime said NeoVim. I went to NeoVim, you know, straight ahead into NeoVim. Do you think Prime has to do a lot with the popularity that NeoVim has in this, you know, past few years? Yeah, without a doubt. And TJ too. TJ, of course. And and you and all the other podcasters that are kind of talking about it and exploring it and thinking about it, that all helps. Um, so in a way, YouTube <laughs> itself is 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 responsible for some of that. But uh, I, I assume it's also there's some of that for Emacs. But I mean, uh -huh. yeah, there was an inflection point there, and certainly. Prime at the time, that all happens kind of without me even noticing because I'm not a big uh, consumer of uh, like live streaming coding, which I think is where Prime came from, probably right, mm -hmm. like on Twitch and stuff like that. Like I've thought about being a producer of that, but not a consumer. <laughs> and why? Why haven't you done it? When is that happening? People would be highly interested, I think. Um, it's. It's just one of those things on the to-do list. I, I, I think I will try to, to get around to doing it uh, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. um, part of it is the discomfort of like accidentally revealing a password or something like that. <laughs> yeah. like, Leaking your IP like Prime has done multiple times. Well, not his IP, but the VM IP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so the solution to that is maybe to like have a an isolated environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Is that yep. what you do? I have two monitors on this monitor and my my laptop. And I have some rules on the window manager and Mac OS so that when I'm using two monitors, all of the sensitive stuff goes to my MacBook, you know, Yabai moves it automatically to that. So even if I open one password or sensitive stuff, email or something, it always opens there if I'm using two screens, right? So that happens when I'm streaming. So uh, not completely safe, but, you know, helps because I don't want to open my calendar and show it on stream. I don't want to open my mail, my password manager and all that stuff. So yeah, two screens um, when I'm when I'm streaming. And that has helped a little bit, I think. I, I, I think... Uh... I mean, there's more than one reason that I think probably it, it, it makes sense to isolate one's development environment fully, like plugin, mm. supply chain attacks, um, NPM supply chain attacks. Mm, I've, seen, I've seen those videos lately, yep. I, I just, uh, I need to get around to like finding a, a good setup for that. Okay. What are your thoughts on that specifically? Now that you touched on it, uh, plugins and security the trust uh, that we should have with, with plugins and how careful we should be. Would you like to talk about any of that? Because people just find a repo on GitHub. They, oh, it's a plugin, new plugin. I'm going to install it. How can you trust? Because once you install a plugin, it can do basically get your private keys, SSH private keys, send them somewhere you will not even notice, right? So is there yeah. something you want to share about that? It's been on my mind a lot. Uh, especially in the last year, because for more than one reason at, at work, we had a, a pretty close call that uh, was in the news. And uh, then before that, there was the Giatan thing with uh, the XZ tool. And um, but it's been on, but, you know, it's been in, it's always been in the back of my mind since forever. Like, it, it's kind of hilarious that that NPM still to this day doesn't really check signatures like in a in a meaningful way, doesn't check package signatures. The the signatures that are in the package lock JSON are just kind of like optional, <laughs> and they, like there's some. It doesn't enforce them somehow, like fully. Like mm. I don't remember the details, but so 
it's all kind of like the whole computing stack of the world is is yolo <laughs> this is just amazing it's amazing i mean i you know in a way it's like it's a, a reason for optimism because you can see how much humanity can build and it's mostly just based on decency like most people aren't trying to do supply chain attacks like but it but it is also just crazy how how much of the world rests on decency and not not being that guy <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly but um yeah r- r- with r- respect to, to neovim like so there's more steps i want to take but i i did uh do some work to clean up some old uh contributors and remove uh right access for them but uh going forward we s- need to think hard about more structure around that um because there's some creative things you can do with github actions ci and uh whatever uh maybe like um even like the even things that neovim doesn't own but but are used commonly to fetch neovim um those can be compromised so we need like operational security that kind of limits the number of people that can do things in our repo without Mm -hmm. at least some visibility Mm -hmm. like github has some mechanisms for that but some of it will probably require scripting some of it will require like teaching developers new workflows for committing stuff but we also don't want to be like cumbersome because the current model where people have ownership and they don't get blocked waiting for someone to commit their stuff that's very effective um it's uncomfortable yeah i remember at the beginning well i installed neovim on my servers but they're mine in my home lab right with all the plugins and all that stuff and i shared on reddit and there was a guy that said hey no don't do that you know because of security reasons right if you work at a company what would you say someone um let's say you're working on a i don't know aws vm would you install NeoVim like in a machine that is ran, you know, at the core of the operations of the company? Would you install NeoVim there with all its plugins, or would you use like a vanilla NeoVim installation? I'm so, I'm talking about security reasons. What would you recommend, or do you keep NeoVim locally and you access the NeoVim the the machine, you know, via SSH from NeoVim? Or how would you handle that? Or do you have any recommendations there? 